What's going on guys? My name is Patrick Bacon and you're watching the one and only Bacon's Drinks channel here on YouTube. And today we're going to be continuing our Tropical Escape series as promised per last video. But as I also stated per last video today, unfortunately will be the last day. Yeah, I know, huge bummer, but don't worry. Once summer rolls around, we're gonna hit tiki cocktails and tropical cocktails with an absolute vengeance. Tiki is my favorite genre, my favorite style of cocktail by far. And once the summer rolls around, I would say probably first week of May, I'm gonna devote an entire one month, maybe even two whole months just to tiki cocktails. So if you guys love tropical cocktails, love tiki, uh, tune in for that. I got a lot of stuff planned. We're gonna do like a Don the Beach Corner versus Trader Vic, cocktail by cocktail, and just all sorts of stuff. It's gonna be great, you'll love it, I promise. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into today's video. So our first cocktail on the menu today is gonna be Max's Mistake. This cocktail was invented by Martin Kate of Smuggler Cove's fame. If you guys don't know about Smuggler's Cove, it's probably, I would say the most well-known tiki bar in the entire country, maybe even the entire world at this point. Uh, the owner, Martin Kate, uh, said he was bartending one night. He accidentally mixed two drinks together and boom, he has this incredible cocktail called Max's Mistake, which in my opinion is one of his best creations. Um, he also says that the name Max's Mistake is an homage to a famous cocktail called Ray's Mistake, which is served the legendary Tiki Tea Bar in Los Angeles, California. Now, Ray, the Ray's Mistake cocktail is the recipe is completely secret. No one knows what it is. It's been protected for like 50 years. But lucky for us, with Max's mistake, what we're making today, Martin Kate did in fact give us the recipe, which is absolutely incredible. I'm so glad he did because this is easily one of my favorites. I might even say this might be in my top five for tiki cocktails. It's that good to me. So let's go ahead and get into making the cocktail. So we're gonna start with one ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Always use fresh squeezed juices, guys. It is, it is a complete game changer and you will never go back once you do. We're gonna do one dash of Angostura bitters. Get a nice healthy dash in there. And then we're gonna do one ounce of tropical passion fruit syrup. I am using Liber & Co today, which is one of my favorite, if not my favorite passion fruit syrup to use. You can easily get it on Amazon. And then I'm going to do a half ounce of fresh made honey syrup. So don't worry, honey syrup is super easy to make for you guys that have never done it before. It's just, hunter, uh, it's just honey and water. And I'll put the recipe in the description, no worries. And I made it with clover honey, by the way, which from my research is actually the most widely used honey in tiki cocktails. And then we're going to do two ounces of London Dry Gin. I'm using Beef Eater today. Beef Eater is usually my go-to whenever a recipe calls for a London Dry. All right. So we do have one very important ingredient left, which is our Fentiman's Victorian Dry Lemonade. But since I'm shaking it today, as opposed to blending it in a blender, um, this is carbonated and it does have some fermented ingredients, so uh, it will build up pressure in the tin and will explode if you add it in there and shake it. So we're gonna add that later. Now, one important thing about this particular ingredient, it is kind of a hard to source ingredient. I had a hell of a time trying to track down an affordable way to get this. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon, but the shipping is very expensive, at least last time I checked. So if you wanna make it worth your time and your money, you're gonna need to order at least more than one. So this brand is necessary. This is what's called for in the recipe. If you use a regular lemonade, it will make the drink entirely too sweet and will ruin the drink. Regular lemonade doesn't have any fermented ingredients. It's not carbonated, so it's, it's just not gonna work out. Now, as far as me, I purchased this from World Market. So if you're lucky enough to live by the store, World Market, they actually sell this by the bottle. You don't even have to buy a pack and it's only like $2 a bottle. All right, guys, so we're gonna add about six to eight ounces of crushed or pebble ice to the tin today. I am using pebble ice from Sonic here. And I stated it per last video, but if you guys don't know, you can actually purchase uh, Sonic Ice by the bag for about two to three dollars depending on where you live. All right, put just a little more in there. I got a small scoop here. All right, that should be about enough. All right, gonna get our glass ready. We're gonna be serving this in a Collins glass today. And let's go ahead and 
get to shake it. All right, so since we're going to be adding our lemonade later, um, we don't want to shake too much because we're going to be adding a lot of dilution with that lemonade. So just shake long enough to mix the ingredients, get a nice chill on the drink. All right, that should be about it. Got a heck of a seal on it today. All right, and then while it's still in the tin, we're going to add two ounces of this Fentiman's Victorian Dry Lemonade. It does kind of bubble up, so you want to keep pouring and let the bubbles die down just a little bit. It's about two ounces there. All right, and then what we're going to do, as opposed to shaking it again, we're going to simply roll back and forth between both of our tins here. I only do it about two or three times just to get that lemonade incorporated with the rest of the ingredients. Then we're going to take our Collins glass and we're just going to roll straight into our glass. That's pretty much it, guys. Let's go ahead and fill the rest of the way up with our uh, pebble ice. Need to get a bigger scoop. <laughs> All right. We're going to give ourselves just a tiny little cap here, just to make it look cool. All right, look at that. And that is it for the body. That is it for the body of the cocktail, guys. Now all that's left is to garnish this beauty. Look at that. And I'm going to be using some fresh mint that I got from my backyard today. The mint is thriving down here in Louisiana right now. Kind of lucky down here as far as plant growth because it's basically like a tropical environment. It's, it's kind of hot and humid and mint just really grows like crazy down here. And it is awesome because I use mint in just about everything. All right guys, so get yourself a nice uh, little swath of mint, fresh mint if you can. We're gonna go ahead and activate it. Get those aromatics going, get those oils activated on the mint. And then we're going to put the mint right in just like that. Let's give it a real quick taste. I'm going to activate that mint again. Man, that is absolutely delicious. That is perfection in a the glass. There's so much going on. It's an absolute flavor bomb of a cocktail. I mean, the passion fruit and the honey are the stars of this particular cocktail. Their, their synergy is greater than the sum of its parts. When passion fruit and honey are mixed together, they just create something like a flavor bomb all together that's just unbelievable. And then uh, we have the dryness of the gin that is coming through. The botanicals of the gin is also coming through. The best way I can describe this cocktail is like a honey, passion fruit infused botanical lemonade. It is absolutely delicious. The tartness of the fresh lemon juice just really rounds everything out. And the drinks just somehow dry and sweet you know, at the same time. It is just so refreshing. It's so delicious. And if you haven't tried this yet, you need to get on this ASAP. It is absolutely delicious. I hope you guys enjoy Max's Mistake.